Let's go back to the DC card now and say hello to one of the stars of the show. He may, uh, when this month is done, he may also win our Nose Award for Submission of the Year, the very prestigious Helwani Nose Award. There he is, Thug Nasty himself, Bryce Mitchell, who scored the second ever twister in UFC history against Matt Sales on Saturday. Bryce, congratulations. How are you? Uh, thank you, my brother. I'm good as always, and I appreciate your time. It's great to talk to you, my friend. It has been uh, it has been several months. Uh, let's clear something up here off the bat. You score the Twister, just the second in UFC history. First one was Korean Zombie Leonard Garcia around 10 years ago. It, did you really just learn that off of YouTube? Is that true? Yeah, I just seen it on YouTube, man. Uh, <laughs> hell, Eddie Bravo gives a, such a detailed description of how to do it. I mean, anybody can learn on YouTube. He, he, he breaks down every detail. Uh, there are some un, some some things that are necessary for MMA you need to know because it's actually a good ground and pound spot, too. It's If the opponent's resisting the twister, uh, you can just ground and pound him and knock him unconscious from there. So that's, you know, he don't go over that on YouTube. He just does the jiu-jitsu version of it. But, yeah, it's it's there on YouTube. And Nobody so, believes me. I tell people all the time I get stuff on YouTube. They don't believe me. When did you first see this particular maneuver and and kind of come up with the idea that you're going to try this in a fight? Uh, I've been doing it probably at least five years, I'd say. At least. Have you ever tried to pull it off in a fight? Um, I don't think I have ever tried it in a fight. I don't think I have. Was it something that you were trying to do in this fight? Like, was it part of the game plan? Did you feel like there was an opening there, or did it just present itself? It it just presented itself. It just flowed really naturally into what I was already doing. And, uh, yeah, th I mean, this fight, I was just so much uh, better than I was in any of my other fights because of I just the concept that I was uh, – using going into this fight you know it, it just that's what opened that up what do you mean by the concept well, coach said cook them to the bone oh what does that mean and well you know a lot of people they like to cook them and take them out too early but when you <laughs> cook them to the bone that meat just falls right off the bone and that's what i did coach said cook them all the way to the bone and i cooked them all the way to the bone meat fell right off that bone is that the first time he's said that to you? No, coach has been telling me, you need to cook this guy. You need to cook him good. He said, this is, he said, this, you ain't got enough time to cook him like the stove, like the stove top. He said, we're going to put him in a pressure cooker. We're going to cook him hard and fast. Wow. And that's, what, that's what I did. And by the way, um, if one were to have perhaps something like, I don't know, squirrel, would you cook squirrel to the bone as well? You always cook the squirrel to the bone. That's okay. tough meat right there. That's right. Are you celebrating, perhaps, with a little squirrel soup this evening? Man, I ate all the squirrel, and, uh, yeah, we got some fish, but that's about it. We're going to have a little fish fry. That's all we got right now. I've, I've ate all my squirrel and rabbit. What's <laughs> funny is my mom, a rabbit got killed. My mom's dog killed a rabbit in the backyard while I was gone, and she wasted all the meat. She threw the rabbit away and was like, she was, she, she started crying, and... <laughs> And whatnot. She's like, oh, my God, a rabbit got killed. And then threw it over the fence, wasted all the meat. But almost had a rabbit waiting on me. Oh, my guy. gosh. <laughs> that would have just made the whole experience even better, right? It would have been great. And, and by the way, when you say that you 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 kind of exhausted all your supply of squirrel, what, what do you mean? Like you just, there's none around anymore? Oh, no, I just eat them all. Okay. Like, you know, you probably get about six at once or something or you know four is a good number to do something with like you know make like a squirrel pot pie or a squirrel stew or something get you about four of them okay um well uh i mean certainly uh very fitting for the occasion uh did you know that there had only been one in ufc history were you aware of that one twister yes sir that was uh uh what's his name korean zombie that's yep. right you knew that yep yeah, yeah, I watched that fight, and uh, yeah, Leonard Garcia kind of done the same thing that Matt Sales did. It's like, I think that if it was maybe a jiu-jitsu match, they would have locked their hands because people have seen the twister, and you know, but in an MMA fight, man, there's punches flying. There's punches flying, there's elbows flying, you're so worried about 
uh, getting your face broke. And uh, when you turn to turn away, you're more likely to leave your arm behind in an MMA fight. It seems like, you know, it's just like both twisters that have been done, the dude was just completely oblivious to defending it. I mean, they, Leonard Garcia gave up the arm. Matt Sales gave up the arm. Um, it's just a mad time where somebody locks their hands and then they get ground and pounded and uh, whatnot. But, yeah, they, he was just unaware of it, you know? Yeah. What does that feel like? Do, do you hear the neck kind of cranking there? What does that feel like as someone who's applying the submission? Man, I've never, ever cranked into a twister that hard. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that's something that you you would never crank into a twister that hard in a gym. If you if you crank that hard into a twister at gym, you ought to be kicked out of your gym. You know, you, I mean, I was trying to break that dude's back. Uh, you know, when I when I hipped in, you can you can do a gable grip at first, and I've done a gable grip at first. Then I rear uh, did the uh, lion killer grip. I readjusted, did the lion killer, and once I put the lion killer in and then hipped, yeah, I've just never felt a twister. Uh, with that much tension on it, man, it's like, you know, I don't know what gives first. It it fucks your hips, your back, and your neck up. So I really don't know what's going to break first. Oh, my. But it felt like, you know how, like, when you pull a rubber band? Yeah. Like one of those, uh, like one of those ankle rubber bands, you know, you do for yoga workouts or what? It's something like that. Sure. You know, like one of those little big, those big rubber bands. You pull it, but as you pull it, you feel more tension on it. Yeah. Well, I, that's how his back felt. His back felt like a, it felt like a big rubber band, but I felt resistance, but then I felt myself pulling oh my. through the resistance. Like I met, I felt tension and then I felt it releasing and I felt more tension and it just felt like I was tearing something. And I honestly think the best thing for him to do right now would be for him to let me twist to the other side. And so he would be all evened up. You know, I'm no chiropractor, but I guarantee you he's got some crooked walk going on right now. He's got some some pimp walk going on. <laughs> Wait, so you are he inviting me... you are inviting Matt to come to Arkansas to have you twist his body the other way to even things out? Is that what you're saying? I will slowly twist the other side back into place. <laughs> I will never crank that hard again. Oh my gosh. Uh, you know, but I would that would be Dr. Bryce recommends you you get in a twister on the opposite side and slowly, uh, yeah, stretch the other side. It's going to line everything back up because when your vertebrae and hips and stuff get all twisted, they get all, all twisted, like twisted up. Yeah. You want to, you want to untwist it the other day, the other way. You know what I'm saying? Just like when my nuts got caught in that drill, they got twisted up one way. I reversed it and untwisted them. Oh gosh. The same concept. Okay. <laughs> it's somewhat ironic, right? I mean, you've, you've been doing a lot of twisting in your, past year and a half or so it's gone full circle yes <laughs> um by the way why haven't you fought since march why were you out for nine months man i was just training really hard just preparing myself you know i'm not in this sport for uh quick money i won't be the best in the world you know i'm far i'm far from in my prime i believe uh you only got one career i really don't like the idea of just taking quick fights just to take them I like putting everything into it and uh, just giving it my absolute best, um, you know, all my energy, everything like that. And so I had a lot of stuff going on outside the gym. And uh, but, yeah, I trained full time. I did everything outside the gym that I wanted to and trained full time as hard as I could. So. Everything you know, OK? Felt like taking yeah, everything's okay. I'm just sore. I lost some weight from that weight cut, but uh, I'll put the weight back on, and I'll be feeling better here. And I'm, you know, just pretty soon. Okay, and you know, you 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 have the, you've talked in the past about you know trying to improve your your life, your family's life, getting this win, getting the bonus. What does this do for you? Uh, we're we're gonna have us a big little workshop for them kids to stay in. Okay, and uh, we ain't gonna have to worry about you know cut money off of this or cut money off that. Can I afford slab concrete on the whole thing? Hell yeah, I can, you know, I can, I can slab the whole thing now. Uh, you know, so, you know, I don't have to skimp on any of my materials. I don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna build it the way that I want it done exactly how I want it done for me and 
and for my woman and for these kids. And I'm going to have money left over afterwards. I'm not going to have to stress about, uh, you know, skipping on <laughs> on some supplies and uh, making it a little bit less big than I wanted it to. It's it's going to be a nice little workshop area. I'm building these. Uh, I'm building a little a living quarters slash workshop area. Just one big one big ass metal building, basically pole barn style. Okay. And are are you still in the trailer, or have you moved out? Oh, the trailer's good to go, man. I'm a happy camper. Okay. <laughs> Pardon the pun, or maybe not. Um, all right, so life is good. You're happy. The one thing that we need to settle are the shorts. What's going on? Why are they Why are they depriving you of these shorts? What's happening? Do we have an update on this? Man, you know they don't want them shorts. That's the last thing they want. Why? You know, I don't know. You know, you talk about making making me marketable. Those shorts will make me even more marketable. Sure. In, in my opinion. I mean, people look. Hell, after the fight, a dude come up to me from the crowd. He had a pair of camo shorts on and a spray-painted shirt. It said, he spray-painted a shirt that said, Doug Nasty. He came up to me and told me he loved me. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. You know, like, you don't think people... You don't think people want to see me in camo shorts? You got a guy in the crowd running around in camo shorts with a spray painted Thug Nasty <laughs> shirt. You don't think people want to see that shit? People want to see me in the camo shorts. I you want to see that. you. I don't get. I, want, I don't see what the hey, problem is. I don't either, man. Have I they given either. you a reason? I'm gonna keep giving. No, they don't. I hardly even talk to anybody, man. Uh, Matt Weevil does all my talking for me and stuff, but sure. And, and I, you know, he don't have the power to just say, Hey, he's going to have the camo shorts now. You know, I don't know, you know, I don't know, but I'm just going to keep giving them hell. You know, somebody's going to have to fold eventually. And it ain't going to be me. You think I'm going to shut up anytime soon? No. <laughs> Listen, you'll that be champion. You'll be champion soon enough. And then they'll be making you as many shorts, uh, camo, non camo, whatever as you want. So I have no, uh, I have no doubt about that. And so do you want to take another, you know, extended period off now or do you want to get back in there relatively soon and if so anyone come to mind uh i don't know i really don't know if i want to do it now or so. I, I haven't really thought about it i just woke up and actually got my first day of good sleep oh uh I, i'll tell you who you know i don't ever call nobody i've never called nobody out in my career and uh there is one person i'm gonna call out real quick okay and uh that that's Floyd Mayweather. Oh, he's he's talking. Yeah, he's talking about he's wanting to box some MMA fighter, and uh, you know, I watched some M some interview of his just probably ten years ago, and it's pissed me off ever since. What do you say? He, I seen Floyd in an interview. This was probably ten years ago. Maybe he's changed his opinion. Maybe he just had a bad day. I don't know. But he said that uh, in the interview, he said MMA is for white dudes who can't box. Hmm. You know, that's what that's what he said, word for word. He said MMA is for, for stupid white dudes who can't box, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'll box him. He, he's talking about he wants to come over and box a UFC fighter. I'll beat his ass. You know, that's all I got to say to him. And he thinks I'm scared of him for a minute. He fights like a bitch. He runs. He's scared. I have never gone into a fight in my life, Ariel, trying to win on points. Never. I, when I go into that cage, I fight to kill somebody, you know. And Floyd Mayweather, he fights like a bitch. He runs. He point fights the whole fight. Most of the fights are boring. It, you know, if he wants a real fight, then it's right here. It's right here, buddy. I'll kick your ass. You know how hard I'll hit Floyd Mayweather? How hard? I'll hit Floyd, I'll hit Floyd so damn hard he'll wake up and be able to read a book. That's how hard I'll hit him. His brain will be so scrambled from my hands. He'll wake up being able to read. The doctors, will, they're going to think it's a miracle. They're going to say, oh, wow, this fucking idiot can read. You know, that's how hard I'll hit Floyd Mayweather. So he can fuck right off. If he wants a boxing match, I'll give it to him. This, this stupid white guy will box him. Wow. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. The challenge has been extended. Bryce Mitchell, UFC budding superstar, wants a piece of Floyd Mayweather Jr. in a boxing match and says that he's going to knock him out. Uh, I, I I was expecting you to say, you know, another fighter, fellow UFC fighter, but uh, why not? Shoot your shot, my man. Why not? Why not you? You've been doing great well, things. Yeah, 
Yeah, man, he's been talking. He's been saying MMA fighters, or for, he said it's for white guys who can't box. And then yeah. He, and then he has the audacity to say he wants to box an MMA fighter. He wants to box a UFC fighter. Well, I'll do it. You got one right here, buddy. Okay. Bryce, congratulations on the victory, my man. That was great stuff. And uh, perhaps we'll be talking very soon. Uh, you, you, you might be winning the uh, Submission of the Year Award. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. You're the man, Bryce. We'll talk to you soon. Congrats again. All right, thank you for having me. There Peace he is. <laughs> Doug Nasty, uh, one of the great characters in our sport. And uh, what a performance, what a win, what a submission Saturday against Matt Sale's second ever twister in UFC history. Hello, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus.